Plastics supercar features. Nor is there a Chevelle counterpart to the Plymouth Roadrunner, the new concept in youth-oriented, low-cost, high-performance Sportster neat, neat. with standard equipment, sports car type suspension, F70 wide oval redline tires, 383 cubic inch V8 engine, dual exhausts, unsilenced air cleaner, four on the floor stick shift, heavy duty 11 inch brakes, distinctive sports style trim and a horn that goes, neat, neat. you don't get that on Chevrolet. The Plymouth Sports Satellite and the Chevelle SS396 are comparable if we add new equipment to each. They're comparable in price with equipment added too. So now back to our feature cars. Here is the two-door satellite. And here's a comparable representative from Chevelle, a two-door Malibu with standard trim. When comparing front-end views, you'll see a more distinctive grille on satellite. Actually, there are four distinctly different grills among Plymouth's midsize five. Chevelle uses one basic grille on all its models. Now for the rear end views. Plymouth at the top uses die cast chrome trim, which is much stronger and sturdier looking than Chevelle's stamped trim. Tail lights on Chevelle wrap around to meet government requirements for side marker lights, while Plymouth has the more modern separate side lights. Here we see other side view differences, roof lines, C posts, and rear fender profiles. Bright metal wheelhouse moldings are standard on GTX, sports satellite and satellite. Chevelle wheel opening moldings come only as part of an option package. So unless you order the option, your Chevelle wheel openings look like this. Now if we step inside the cars, a five inch difference in Plymouth's favor makes it much easier to get in and out. You also find it's easier to slide underneath the Plymouth steering wheel than under the Chevelle steering wheel where there's an inch and a quarter less room. When you check the instrument panels, notice the score is three to one in favor of Plymouth when it comes to gauges. Plymouth has gauges for the alternator, the water temperature, and for fuel. Chevelle has the fuel gauge only. Another point, less than three full turns of the window crank to conveniently lower a Plymouth front door window. A full four and a half turns in Chevelle. Glove box doors. Chevelle's points back like a knife edge at the front seat passenger's knees. Plymouth's glove box door in the open position presents a broad, safe surface that provides an additional safety factor in case of impact. Of course, everybody is interested in stereo these days. It's one of this year's hottest accessories. On Plymouth, the stereo tape unit is built in with the radio as part of the instrument panel. On Chevelle, the stereo tape unit is an add-on underneath the dash. The Plymouth driver controls both right and left-hand fresh air vents from his side of the compartment. On Chevelle, the driver has to reach way across to get to the right-hand vent. Plymouth has an 11 and a half inch diameter, 190 degree horn ring that you can find with a fingertip, even in a turn, no matter what the position of the driver's hands upon the steering wheel. On Chevelle, to blow the horn, the driver must locate one or the other of the two half-inch wide horn buttons. With the door glass cranked down on the Chevelle, the vertical weather strip on the rear window glass is still very much in evidence. Makes Chevelle look more like a B-post coupe than a hardtop, don't you think? On Plymouth, two-door hardtops, the vertical weather strip is attached to the door glass, not to the rear window glass, and it goes down completely out of sight. Notice on Plymouth, the front end of the steering column terminates well short of the forward end of the engine. This means that in case of front end impact, the Plymouth steering column is protected by the engine mass. On Chevelle, the front end of the steering column projects forward of the engine. In backing and in parking, here's what the Plymouth driver sees out through the rear window. Notice how both rear fender tips are visible. In Chevelle, the driver in a similar situation cannot see the car's rear fender tips. He lacks these points of reference in backing and in parking. One reason for this better rearward visibility in Plymouth is two and a half inch higher back light. Another reason is Chevelle's chopped off rear end styling. Usable luggage space in mid-sized Plymouth is a big 15.6 cubic feet, 21% more than in Chevelle standard sedans, 23% more than in Chevelle sports sedans. Check how high you hoist those suitcases before they're up and over into the luggage compartment. On Plymouth, 
The lift is 26 and a half inches. On Chevelle, the load gets hoisted a full four inches higher up off the ground, 30 and three quarter inches. Now, there are larger loads to be carried on a more or less regular basis, then the choice will likely be a wagon. The old story is that a picture is worth a thousand words, but it doesn't take a thousand words for Chevelle salesman to say no when his prospect asks if he can furnish a three-seat station wagon. Another picture that may be worth a thousand words. Every Plymouth mid-sized wagon has the dual-action tailgate standard equipment. See for yourself how easy it is to load a two-seat wagon with a side-hinged tailgate, a convenience you cannot get in Chevrolet Chevelle. With a Chevelle wagon, you have to lift packages in and over the lowered tailgate. Another Plymouth exclusive, the optional tailgate window washer wiper. It washes the window automatically when the driver pushes a button, squeegees it dry as the window goes up. A final word on station wagons. Standard tire on Plymouth midsize wagons is 825 by 14, compared with 775 by 14 on Chevelle wagons. So let's get under the hoods of our two cars, shall we, and see what makes them go. At the low end of the V8 engine power lineup, Plymouth engines have 190 and 230 horsepower. Chevelle, 200 horsepower. In the middle ranges, Plymouth power is 290, 330, and 335. Chevelle, 250, 275, and 325. In the premium bracket, Plymouth has the Super Commando 440, standard on GTX with 375 horsepower. Standard V8 on Chevelle's premium line, SS396, rates 325 horsepower. 50 extra horses, a 15% power advantage for GTX over the premium line Chevelle SS396. Optional Plymouth Street Hemi turns on a big bruising 425 horses. Chevelle's most powerful top option is a 350 horsepower. In the six-cylinder engine bracket, Chevelle offers two engines, one with slightly more power than Plymouth. But Chevelle has about 80 pounds more bulk to drag around, so they don't have any performance advantage, particularly when you compare transmissions. I'd plan to save this particular morsel of information for later, but I see I've let the cat out of the bag already. You see, Plymouth makes three-speed torque flight available on every model. On Chevelle, the only available automatic transmission is two-speed power glide unless you take the premium line, SS396. Torque Flight's extra gear range gives you greater flexibility for both performance and economy. In stopping power, six models, Plymouth midsize cars have the advantage. Four pounds less car weight to stop for each square inch of brake lining area. On V8 models, 16 pounds less car weight to stop for each square inch of brake lining area. In wheelbase size, which as you know makes a noticeable difference in riding comfort and interior roominess, Plymouth has a four-inch advantage in two-door models, a one-inch advantage in station wagons. Only on four-door sedan and hardtop models, the Chevelle wheelbase equal that on mid-size Plymouths. Finally, I don't need to remind you that Plymouth has unibody, whereas Chevelle has a body bolted to a frame. You know all the benefits of that tighter, welded construction. And also equally important, I know you won't forget that only Plymouth has torsion air suspension. Chevelle, coil springs at all four corners. Again, you know the benefits. Add it all up, and from where I stand, it shapes up very definitely in favor of a mid-size Plymouth over and above a mid-size Chevrolet Chevelle. Which is why, among mid-size cars, the Plymouth, when you overbeat, goes on.